We were wondering, could we do velocity banking with 15,000 in our savings account and pay it back like velocity? Okay, this, I, I often get that question. That's very interesting that you're thinking, right? So that you're thinking about, you know, velocity banking with existing capital, right? So some people are like, oh, you know, uh, my savings account gives me 2.5% uh, return or whatever they say. Or maybe they mention the CD, right? Which a CD, a CD might actually be something. I've never tried it before, but it could be something. It could be a potential move. So for your example, if I have existing capital right assets stocks ira right saving so we would we would put savings as an asset down here as well right so i have if i have any initial initial capital based on my four major numbers there's there's two ways we can go with this okay and then also based on my credit now, in their particular situation, they've been denied multiple times. So what I don't wanna do is apply for anything else right now. What I could do to, a, to establish and build credit is get a secured line of credit at a much lower interest rate than an unsecured. Put the 15K up, right? The, banks, the bank gives me 15K. Now I have 30. Most people will not comprehend that as 30. But in velocity banking, I have 30. Trust me. I got 30. And I'm going to show you how. This 15K gets stored safely with bank. The bank gives me their 15K. If I use any of their 15K, what are they going to do? They're going to charge me an interest rate. But since this is a revolving line of credit, right? I'm going to figure out how can I maximize the 15K right now to pay off bad debt. So I'm going to do simple math and I'm going to get those numbers, the balance owed on the debt, the interest rate, the monthly payment and the maturity date. Based on those numbers and all of the other debts, we're going to qualify which debt we want to tackle first. Usually I base it off cash flow first, interest later. Cash flow first, interest later, majority of the time. What will hinder that is the actual balance owed on it. So if I have 15K to work with, if I borrow it, I'm gonna get charged interest. All I have to do is figure out how do I borrow from Peter, which technically is me, at a max of, of about 66% or in this case on, on 15K, somewhere around this number, 9,900, right? And how can I apply this 9,900 to save loads of interest and cash flow on a specific debt or debts? Once I've done that, I'm now in debt over here on the line of credit, right? Now I'm gonna get charged an interest rate. Whatever that interest rate is, it's gonna charge me on a daily basis. So the same day that I pull out my, what we call a chunk, a chunk of money or a lump sum of money out of this secured line of credit, I wipe out a specific debt, my cash flow goes up immediately every month thereafter. I then take this income and I dump it all back into the line of credit the same day I pull the money out. So we're gonna, we're gonna structure this chunk to come out the day you get paid. So if you get paid on Friday, we're gonna chunk, chunk 99, boom. You're gonna have the most amount of money on payday. So why not make the chunk then? So I send all the money to the line of credit the same day I took it out. What does that do, my friend? It removes the interest from getting calculated on your money that you made. So you get charged nothing, maybe a dollar, maybe, if you're lucky, right? 
So from that move, the following days, right? I'm gonna get charged interest, but I'm gonna get charged less interest than 9,900 based on whatever I took out. I'm only gonna get charged interest on whatever I take out, right? On whatever I take out. Very, very important on a daily basis. So it, it might end up looking like a couple dollars a day, not even, maybe one to three dollars on average per day. Based on the amount of debt that we killed up front today is what I call cushion against whatever interest we pay over here. So what actually happened? I borrowed from Peter at 0% by securing it with the bank. I then maximized this money to pay off a bad debt to increase cash flow. And guess what? I never lost my money in the process because it's been with them the bank been with them at the bank already. If you would have just used a savings account, what you have to understand is that 15k is only 15k in the savings account. So as soon as you use it, one shot, one kill. You're done. It doesn't come back, my friend. Why? Because when you when you dump all your income back into that savings account, what did you do? You didn't do anything. Money's gone. Now you're just building it back up. That's not velocity banking. That's debt snowball. That's taking money and dumping it towards a debt, and you're done, right? Whereas this case, I just multiplied the money. I didn't grow it. I multiplied it using the bank's money. And I paid nothing in interest to do so because whatever interest I paid over here, I was going to pay it over here anyways, right? Now I'm just paying much less. I removed it up front. And I paid a small portion over here. So technically, I didn't really pay interest because you were paying it over here anyways on your debts, right? So that's one way that an individual who has been denied multiple times trying to obtain a debt tool can do velocity banking with a secured personal line of credit, okay? That's one way. The second way, based on your four major numbers right and then also time education learning is we could potentially take a look at the infinite banking concept and skip velocity banking okay so basically everything i just explained what IBC does is establishes your own private banking system where you can do exactly what we did with the bank, right? But instead of actually getting charged even a little bit of interest, with IBC, I'll be earning more interest, okay? The only drawback with IBC is the upfront cost which is why in most cases we probably won't do that. In some cases, based on the four major numbers and the existing capital that we have to work with, what maybe if the number was 30K or 45K, I might be more inclined to say, hey, maybe we can match it up and, and see how both would look like. But essentially, you would send your capital into a high cash value life insurance policy where we would most likely design a 1090 split policy which basically means that 10% of whatever I put in goes towards the cost of life insurance and the other 90% we're going to drive it into cash or another word for it is PUA okay and from doing that, this takes more time, which is another drawback because you got to learn the concept. Then you got to apply for life insurance, go through underwriting, approve the design, go back and forth with the agent, you know, build a relationship with the agent. So that's going to take some time. So there's some drawback. That's the second drawback. So the first one is cost up front. Second one is time, right? And then the third is the actual 
liquidity, the, the access to the money. In the first year, if we design a policy correctly, we could have 80, 85% of whatever I initially put in to actually borrow against and use, which is not the best, right, up front. Because if I'm only, you know, working with a small amount of capital, I don't want it to kind of go to waste, to cost. Although this is a great concept and it works beautifully, if we're not preparing ourselves for it, it can end up being a high cost asset. It can be a very expensive product to, to use. So we might not do that. In some cases, we do. But in most, we don't. So I go back to the other one. So these are the, the two options in terms of what can I do with $15,000 after I've been denied multiple times trying to obtain a personal line of credit or, or a HELOC, right? And then again, James, doing all the other things that I just said earlier, right? So you're gonna have to rewind, watch it 10 times to really get this, right?